So one of our favorite quantum stocks, D-Wave, who specializes in quantum annealing, has seen another crazy day in the stock market today. It has increased the share price by 25% on news that D-Wave has released an advantage to system to the public. And I wanted to just focus on D-Wave in this video because they have been absolutely tearing it up. The stock has been at all time highs, testing 52 week highs. We finally broke all time highs in the training day yesterday. And then we just blew those all time highs out of the water today. So I'm going to do some price analysis, but I'm also going to share with you some notes that I took from the conference when I attended the Qubits 2025 conference just about a month and a half ago, and just give some of my reflections on that. I'm also going to share some price analysis and some other tidbits of information that might be helpful as we kind of assess where we're going from here with D-Wave. So let's jump in. Okay, so on March 31st of this year, I took some notes on the keynote and the keynote that Dr. Baratz gave at Qubits 2025 is available online. I'm just gonna uh, read some of my notes here. So one thing that Dr. Baratz said is the tech industry is spewing misinformation about quantum and quantum stocks. Thought that was very interesting. Their quantum supremacy paper published, which is an experiment that simulated behavior of a suite of lattice structures. So this is an important distinction. A lot of people hear quantum supremacy and think every possible application, it's just better. Uh, this is for specifically a behavior of a suite of lattice structures. And the reason why it's important that we make that distinction is so there's not confusion of what their specific claim and the research was. There is a narrow scope, but it did outperform a modern classical supercomputer in that specific study. So Alan also said, Dr. Bratz, the CEO of D-Wave said, you get a big target on your back when you're kind of making, making waves, you know, making a, a change in the industry. So at the conference, they said, we're going to have an advantage to later in 2025. And what I'm noticing from D-Wave is they're following through on the things they say they're going to do. In the CNBC interview earlier this year, when Jensen Huang had come out and said quantum is 15 to 30 years away, it was Dr. Baratz who came on CNBC the very next day and said, hey, actually we're commercial today and Jensen doesn't have this right. So it's turned out that Dr. Baratz is been right about that. And so they're on a road to 100,000 qubits. If my understanding is correct, they currently have about 4,000 qubits in their annealing machine. And one of the benefits of an annealing machine is that there's better coherence and less noise issues, which makes building them a little bit easier. One other impressive thing is that there's 99% uptime for their systems. So they want to use and this is still my notes from the speech, they want to use their systems on, they want to use D-Wave. So Dr. Baratz also mentioned new applications like materials discovery, blockchain, quantum and AI, and AI model training. He also talked about large language models and the QPU. So we had a few people on stage on that first day, and one was Jay Lowell from Boeing. And when asked about Boeing's thoughts on quantum adoption, I wrote down this quote, the ceiling is much higher than we expected. And I thought that was very interesting and telling as Boeing explores how they can use potentially quantum annealing in their process. A representative, Thomas Roan from SAS, says they're impressed with D-Wave and they'll be doing more business and they're working on integer linear modeling quality and feasibility speed. 
And then we had Entity Docomo also at the conference, and they have said that something that would have taken over 10 hours, they did in minutes. So they are optimizing towers, cell traffic, and telecommunication with quantum annealing. We also had Ulix Super Computer Center, which was later in the day. And they're basically saying the basic science, the basic science is the driver of economic growth. They also have their realized quantum program, Quantum Realized with Leap Quantum, their launch program, and on-premise systems. And they're really starting to talk about, hey, we can sell you a machine or we have this uptime, this 99% uptime. Then, of course, Charles Payne from the Fox Business Network was there. And Charles Payne had basically said, some of the rhetoric has seemed to be designed to marginalize quantum. And basically what it came down to is Dr. Bratz was saying there, we need more energy efficient computing for solving hard problems. And I've said on this channel a number of times, every time we build an AI data center, we also have to build a power plant. And that's because these AI data centers require so much energy. So if a QPU, a quantum annealing machine or a quantum computer is able to run these calculations and use less energy, that would be great for the environment and it would save a lot of money on energy costs. So the more use cases there are, the more revenue there will be. Okay, so that concludes my notes from Qubits 2025. Let's take a look at the announcement today, which was a follow through on what Dr. Barats had said at the conference. So D-Wave has announced their availability of the advantage to quantum computer. It's most advanced and performance system to date. So D-Wave, a leader in quantum computer systems, software, and services, announced the general availability of its Advantage 2 system, a powerful and energy efficient annealing quantum computer capable of solving computational problems, complex problems beyond the reach of classical. Then I have a quote here from Dr. Baratz. It's an engineering marvel with substantial technical achievements that highlight D-Wave's progress in scaling quantum technology to meet industry demands for growing computational processing power while maintaining energy efficiency. We're helping customers realize value from quantum computing right now, and the Advantage 2 system represents a remarkable achievement in delivering on that mission. Customers can now access the Advantage 2 system via D-Wave's Leap's real-time cloud service. And this is a service that has 99% uptime, which is also a differentiator for D-Wave at this time because most quantum cloud service providers could not touch 99.9% .9 availability with a 10-foot pole. A lot of them have significant downtime and do not have that availability. I highlighted here, while there's performance gains across the board, I wanted to highlight one thing. For their last six generations, these machines are only using 12 and a half kilowatts. That is one of the most important things because you're able to do this, these certain processing tasks with far less power than an AI data center on the modern best GPUs. So energy efficiency is gonna be the name of the game going forward. And it's incredible that they're still able to build these machines that require such little power. Finally, I wanted to go over a couple quick customer use cases. So Carlton Coffrin at the Los Alamos National Laboratory says, I led a significant R&D effort to explore the use of analog quantum for scientific discovery in condensed matter theory and magnetic materials. We currently use Advantage 2 prototype, which has yielded a variety of interesting results that are currently being prepared for peer review. The team is eager to work on the full-scale Advantage 2 system to further this research. So that's very good. And and uh, if, if we're investing in this company, which I personally am, I love to see that because that means good news is in the future. Let's say this research gets peer reviewed and there's yet another paper that is showing the commercial usefulness of a quantum annealing machine. 
So Dale Moore, president and CEO of Davidson Technologies, I actually introduced myself to Dale while I was at the conference. He was ecstatic on stage about the advantage to system and insistent really that quantum advantage is now. And it was very inspiring to hear his speech. And we, and he said, uh, in this quote here, we are thrilled to host an advantage to annealing quantum computer on premises at Davidson headquarters in Huntsville, Alabama. We believe the system offers an important new pathway for the development of quantum optimization application designed to support mission critical challenges and national security focused quantum research. So we have a national security use case and we have a direct installation in Georgia where they're testing this out at this time. Will that turn into a sale for D-Wave? We'll see. It does sound promising. We also know from Dr. Barat's recent interview that I covered on this channel, each quantum computer sale is between 20 million and $40 million. That's a significant amount of revenue for where D-Wave is in the revenue sort of infancy of their company. That's, that's how I'm going to put it. So I also got a chance to talk to Japan Tobacco and their chief scientist says the impact of bringing quantum together with AI could drive new breakthroughs in life sciences as demonstrated in our recent proof of concept. The project revealed that D-Wave's advantage quantum systems, advantage two, Quantum systems can deliver high quality, low energy samples that could drive enhanced performance in generative AI architectures. We have, you don't have to listen to the company itself. What you, you can listen directly to the clients themselves and what they're saying about using the quantum computers and the benefit that they're getting, which, which is what makes D-Wave and QBTS, their ticker symbol, such an interesting company and such an interesting investment at, at this point. And I'm just pulling up now the stock heat map. So today was pretty gross. Uh, not, not like anything, uh, really to write home about. Um, this is one of those days where there's just pullback across the market. We see all of big tech had a pullback today. Then we see on our quantum watch list that QBTS in a market that was that ugly still posted a 26% gain. Skywater, D-Wave's chip fabricator, 5.7%. And LAES, I actually covered this ticker uh, first thing this morning, posted a 5% gain and showing some bullish momentum. Even ARQQ going into earnings showed some green. And then we had some sell-off, QUBT, Google. Google had their I.O. conference today. I watched some of it, fell a little bit flat. To be honest, I think they're missing the mark um, when it comes to speaking directly to investors, whether that's here nor there. So let's take a look now at, let's take a look. So since November, if you were buying D-Wave, you were buying D-Wave share at a dollar a share. And then D-Wave went all the way up to 1129 during the quantum frenzy. And then it sold off during the quantum crash. Then on their claims of quantum supremacy, their forward guidance, we went up, we made a new high and then sold off in a very tough macro with a lot of tariffs and different sort of things that were making the whole market really sell down significantly. Now on this last earnings where D-Wave exceeded expectations, we are seeing an incredible push. We pushed through the all-time highs and then on this announcement of the advantage too, we see a gap up and now we're in this area called price discovery where D-Wave is trying to figure out what am I worth in this market? So the former all-time high, we're looking back at the former all-time high, like it, it's, it's, a, it's a small object in the rear view mirror. Um, what I'm seeing in the price action and I thought was quite interesting is that we did see 
a double, perhaps a triple top if you want to count this one at 1762. So rejection, but also as you can see, I've marked out another range, price range here, uh, a key levels. Um, we also had some support at the 1612, which was quite interesting to me because we're, again, we're in price discovery. We're in like this nosebleed area. The air is rare up here. We don't know what D wave is going to do from here. And it, it's just interesting. Uh, I think I'm going to use a cop out word interesting that we have seen from earnings, right? Where these shares could be picked up at $6 and 84 cents a share to today, 160% gain. So typically in situations like this, caution is warranted. Would I be buying D-Wave at this current level? Probably not because I feel like the risk to reward ratio isn't there. I really want to see D-Wave start to show over a long period of time what its price and base of support is going to be. We did see that it was building a base of support in this 10 to $12 range, which was awesome to see. We don't have a ton of price history above $12, and we are brand new to this 16 to 17 $18 level. So one thing that I want to, I know that there's a lot of new followers to the channel and I was talking to a young, young investor last night and I, I just want to, to warn or, or at least give word, word of caution that just because the stock has gone up by 40% or 50% or in this case, 150%, it can also come down. So we could see something like this come down to 13 or we could see it come down to 1034. So you need to decide what, where are you going to draw the line? And that's where you would set a stop loss. Now I am personally long on this name, so I'm not too concerned with day-to-day -day price movement. Yeah. I wouldn't want to see it get cut in half, but we can't roll out anything, right? Uh, this is a, a, a huge price extension. If we look at, so I pulled up the RSI here and you can see that we're overextended on the RSI. And that is typically an indicator that a stock needs to chill out or sell off. So could we see something like where we just kind of bounce around and, and just form a base of support at these higher ranges or is D wave going to continue up? And that is where uh, I'm on this journey with you all. I don't have a crystal ball, so I can't tell you guys for sure. But it's fun to see the rewards of this company. And they're being rewarded in the free market for their innovation and their disruptive technology. And are we just seeing the beginning of an epic rally? Who knows? So... I appreciate all of you guys. I appreciate the new followers to the channel. Uh, I appreciate the community here. That's all I have for you today. If you're a D-Wave investor, congratulations. I'm really enjoying watching this company grow. And it's been a, a pleasure also to engage with you all in the community here as we uh, build up this, this quantum investor community and share information and knowledge. I learn a lot from you all, believe it or not. So please keep sharing your thoughts and, and your opinions and even people that are, that are short on these names. I'm having some very interesting conversations, uh, learning about their perspective on things and, and just sharing. Uh, and and I, it's a really fun process for me. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys. Have a great day.